Hello, everybody. My name is Ian Kirk Patty Cake. I'm an author, idiot, and loin streamer. And today we're going to be talking about um, what books are, driving forces in books, and just kind of some different discussion points about writing books or like the content of books, the themes in books, uh, assumptions that are made from the themes in books. And I'm not entirely sure how how to package this really but it's something that came up because of gaze upon the gods a more recent book released by molly x chang that is called a young adult fiction it says romance but i don't know if it's romance uh we'll get into that a little bit but it's being called a colonizer romance and it's getting some flack for that and yes it is on my reading list it's just not uh, being immediately read and of course i'll probably read it by the time nobody cares about what it is anymore but uh <laughs> yeah, that's fine but i want to talk about the different driving forces of books i kind of mentioned this in the bringer of light review where it felt like the driving force of that book was the political themes in it the same thing with ben shapiro's book i sort of referenced how i felt like there were different there were more than plot driven or character driven novels. So that's what I want to talk about today and kind of just these different things and how to try to sort of approach books. And this isn't to say that anybody has to like anything they don't like or don't like anything they don't like. Lord knows that I don't, but that's really the thing. And this is, this is more about, I feel like interpretation or projecting things onto the author from the book. And it's very hard not to do that, especially in the cases where you've heard the author say things out of book that they say in book, which is, different than seeing something in a book that an author hasn't said and then projecting it onto them because it was in their book. But we'll get into this. Before we get started though, number one, if you enjoy what I do here on the channel, please remember to like, share, and subscribe for more. Number two, if you would like to be featured on the channel, check out the links down in the description below. The number one way to be featured is through Lemoy, the monthly prompt writing contest where I give you a prompt, you write a short story using that prompt, and on the first Monday video of the month, just like this Monday, we bask in your creativity because y'all are dripping with it in a completely summer relevant way. It's... <laughs> The second way to be featured is if you are an indie author and have a book out or a book that is coming out, if you submit it to the Fresh Meat feature, the first chapter and the cover, that chapter will be read here on the channel to hopefully help more readers find your work. I promise you they're out there. It's just about getting in the right place at the right time to have the exposure. And it is all on you to impress you know if my voice doesn't turn people off the third thing is if you would like to check out any of my books they're available at any of your favorite places to get books including the local library upon request and uh my newest novel body more zero is coming out in october featuring these two lovely gentlemen right here is the main characters check them out i hope you're as excited for it as i am maybe a little maybe not quite as excited but i am very excited to share these gentlemen with the world in and what they've got going on. With that said, let's get into the topic. So maybe you've heard of the phrase, I'm sure you have because we all have heard it ad nauseum in any discussion about books. You cannot avoid the person saying this and I'm sure there will be somebody in the comments saying it unironically. I know if you're saying it ironically, okay? I'm pretty sure I can, I can spot you. <laughs> but all books are political. Every decision that you make in a book is political. Even freaking I've heard reading books is political. I mean, it can be. But that has to do with intent. Intent actually changes something. If you call somebody a cupcake, it can either be an insult or a compliment, depending on the intent of the speaker. The same thing can be said about books. Books are often just books. However, the author writes the book with some sort of intention, whether it is to share a character story, to share a message, to share an experience, to climax, to wish fulfill, to, to show an adventure, to show some somebody to look up to. I know that there is a large swath of people that believe that books and, and media and television's job is to be the the moral showcase of heroism. And so they think that the only types of stories that should be written to have main characters who are moral or, you know, reflect their morals. If that's what you want to do, whatever, to show that heroism, but not everybody writes that way. And not everybody is writing a story with a main character whom you're supposed to emulate. But there are people that assume if it's the main character of a story, they're supposed to, one, be a good guy or be somebody that you emulate, and two, cannot have any actual moral foibles. So then you end up with 
situations. Uh, but there are actually many more ways to write a book, many more reasons to write a book than morals or messaging. The idea of saying something that glamorizes something because it's in a book or the main character does it or going after the author because the text says something is it, it crosses a line. Now there is, like I said at the beginning of the video, there is some gray area when you see the author say, this was my experience, or this is from me, or you see them in out of character context, saying things that other characters are saying in context. Then you can start drawing lines. This is one of the reasons that I like to go and look for interviews or try to talk to authors or look at their social media after I'm reading their books or when I'm reading their books to try to get an idea of the direction they were trying to go with the book. I looked at interviews for Tampa while I was reading Tampa to try to figure out what that author was thinking. I did the same thing with His Name is Augustin where I was like, is Swanee supposed to be seen as a good guy or a bad guy? Because she just reads like she's having a villainous arc. And I don't know if she's supposed to read that way. I even read books recommended by that author to try to get a, a hint of what this author's intention was. Because I want to know what they were doing versus what I took away. And so, and then I can discuss the elements of the book in that manner. Like, this is why I took it this way, and this is what I think could have been done to help it in that way. Not that there's only one way to express something, but I want to be straight on what is my interpretation versus what I think is actually being perpetuated in a novel. Because as artists and as novelists, we can explore a lot of sensitive topics, if that's not obvious by some of the things on this channel. The novel and movies and media like that gives a safe distance to explore ideas and experiences and dehumanize them from ourselves in order to share them with other people or in order to explore the ramifications of some of the things that we've experienced or have experienced. One of my favorite things about novels and probably especially why I like first person is getting so deep into that psychology and the way that that person lives that you see all of their decision making and the way that they view the world whether it's accurate or not and so then you get to live that way and see what that person sees and get so deep in it and that's what i love it's the same reason that i love really well written autobiographies or biographies is i want to see that person the decisions they made who they become why they became the way that they became through the discussion of their choices and of their life and how they justified things. So five driving forces that I've recognized for novels. And let me know if you've thought of any others outside of this. I'm not saying these are the only five, but these are the five that I've recognized are character driven books, plot driven books, philosophy slash messaging slash politic driven books. That's also going to include like moral driven books or stories, climax driven books. That's going to usually be your, your um, your smut, or I'm going to say your uh, splatterpunk in there because that's all about climaxing as well, where you get everything as splattery as possible, be it blood or not blood. And then five, wish fulfillment. So it's the ultimate goal is just to get your character to be wherever the author wants the character to be, the most powerful, the with the bad boy, the, the whatever that wish fulfillment is, the king of the galaxy. There are all those things. Some of the sketchy books that have been read on this channel, sketchy books include Tampa and Heather. And so like when you're starting to get into these topics like Tampa and Heather that are both from predatory perspectives, Tampa is from a female predator and Heather is from a male pre predator perspective. Why is a book written about a predator pursuing a child? What was the purpose of this? That's then to look at the driving forces of the books. And in Tampa's case, the author said that it was for its satire to bring light to how society treats female predators different than male predators. And if that's the stated goal, then you also have to look at, well, what does the book do to highlight that difference? It doesn't really do anything. And then you talk about the styling of it, the narrative, the story being told, how these elements gather together to present the story that it says that it's trying to tell. And that's with the over-sexualization, the dehumanization, the attempts to make the children in the story just a toy, the way that she... The majority of the pages are just sexualization. And in 
reading My Dark Vanessa recently as well. That book skips through a lot of time as well, but it does so much to establish the relationship, to establish the characters, the feelings, to show that situation happening. And there is so much more that could have been done with Tampa if it wanted to show the societal the difference, but you never actually saw that teacher being really involved in society in a way that she was given a pass for abusing children, which also could have been... Um, with her like casually talking to people and being like, yeah, there are some pretty cute boys in my class. They're going to have a good time with the ladies and like nobody thinking anything of it that she's complimenting these kids in her class. But if a guy teacher said something about very good looking girls in his class, they would be like given the side eye immediately. So there are so many things that you could do that if you say this is what you want to try to do, then how are you going to portray that? And it's what you need to think about when you're crafting a story is what is the purpose of the story? That's I would put that on the back burner, by the way, of uh, after your first draft beyond your basic idea of what is the story I'm trying to tell. Because if you get too bogged down in the ideas and the construction of the story, I think a lot of people struggle with actually building the story and finding the characters because they're so busy trying to communicate to the audience what they don't know what the book is about yet. But that's just how I write, and I would not tell anybody else that my way is it. It's just a way. Heather is also an interesting study because you have the author saying things that echo what the character Michael in that book says. And then you have him using Lolita to lure in a Lolita of his own, which funny enough, also with Dark, My Dark Vanessa, that teacher gives the, the girls that he's targeting Lolita, or at least we see him give um, Vanessa the book Lolita, knowing that she is going to misinterpret it as a love story and it even has her tell somebody in some of these chapters in one of the chapters later chapters that she said that it was a love story and was corrected by her te by a teacher in college that it was not a love story and that's that's not how you need to read it but he the teacher in my dark vanessa gave it to the 15 year old and she looked at it and saw them and associated them with those characters and saw humbert humbert as a tragic guy just in love with this girl so so swept away by this girl and then you see in heather he does the same thing and he feels like he is powerless underneath Heather and that she is the mastermind of all of this and he has no autonomy of his own. He is just a victim of Heather. Now, the the, the weird thing in that book is, one, the, the misinterpretation. So then you have to wonder, did the character Michael misinterpret the book or did the author misinterpret the book? And there's no way to tell because there's no video on the author's channel to discuss how the author read Lolita and if he was trying to misuse Lolita on purpose to show Michael's twisted perspective. But it gets into kind of a weird area when Michael also um, echoes some of the things the author says. And you go, okay, how much of this is what the author believes versus how much of this is Michael? Because Michael could just be a really good rendition of an incel style guy who feels hopeless, who feels in his mid thirties, that the only way for him to get any attention is from these young girls, which is actually just Heather. And with this obsession that comes of Heather. And then like, why did he obsess over Heather specifically? Has there been other girls? There could have been so much more done with that specifically that I'm, I'm sad that it seemed more like it was for shock factor and a little bit of a tirade against modern women but um it could have been something with some edits but it it just it it crossed into a sketchy area that makes you go why what was the intent behind this and so talking about the book if the author would talk about the book would give us more insight into why it was written the way that it was written i would happily talk about the background of any of my stories if anybody was interested in the why or the inspiration or the choices that i made and then there's always going to be things that you make choices but you didn't actually really realize some of the things that you put in there, which is also fun and interesting, depending on what it is people find. Um, but you tell on yourself in ways that you don't really know in writing, but it's not always as obvious as, oh, this character is a racist, which means obviously the author is a racist. That, that gets into questionable territory, which then you get into Shadow of the Conqueror, where there have been lots of, lots <laughs> of comments that I, I can't say anything to or for, but they attack the author's character. And since I don't watch any of the author's videos and or channel, except for talking about the AI stuff more recently, I can't say anything about those accusations. But I can say that it gets into a really sketchy territory. Again, the same with Michael and with GC McKay. 
is it gets into a sketchy territory of assuming that the author is the character because then you're sort of discouraging and or threatening the authors not to explore certain ideas or to cross certain lines or else you will start going after them and accuse them of doing things. Lead characters are not always trying to be somebody that you should aspire to, somebody that you should like. Often they're, they're failing. But then that also goes into why is this book written and how does it portray what is written? With Shadow of the Conqueror, there was earlier on the discussion that, that the theme is can all things be forgiven and if that is your theme then you're starting with this thesis of is there a sin that God won't forgive that humans can't forgive is there a part where you cannot get redeemed back which means the author either has to believe that you can be redeemed and he is going to show that gray nuanced area of the character trying to redeem themselves through acts or there, the author is going to believe that you can't redeem yourself. And so then this, the book is going to mirror the idea that you cannot redeem yourself, be it through the character failing constantly, the character trying and everybody rejecting it, or the character outright rejecting the idea of redemption because he just doesn't believe that either there's a way back or that he deserves it or that there is any meaning to redemption. Because in order to have redemption, you have to believe that there is a value in it, right? That there's an inherent value. And in the case of Shadow of the Conqueror, what does redemption give the main character? What is the reason for it? Is it holiness? Because in most cases, when you're dealing with redemption, when you're dealing with spirituality like that, and you're dealing with God and, and apologizing for the wrongs that you've done, it's for the the spirit. It's for the soul. It's to 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 apologize for the things that you have done. And so if you're not apologizing to the people, which clearly Dalen in Shadow of the Conqueror was not, because when he was faced with his own victims, he swore at them, he beat them, he told them that they are worse than him if they don't accept his apology, that's not apologizing or repenting to your victims. He never gets on his knees and grovels about what he's done. Instead, he uses his ego to boost, but I gave you all of these things. I at least outlawed child labor while raping 14-year-olds. And so that's going to go into the messaging of the story. So is the ending of the book that is going to say, do you get a second chance? That is going to give an idea of if the story believes that the character can be redeemed or not. This also goes into even with my characters with Bleed More Body More series. Like the series is all about family and second chance and and love. And it's it's not just familial love, but it's friendship love, it's brotherly love. And the story of Casey and Ralph specifically is a story of a second chance. It's a story of how our past sort of sort of mold who we become. There's a line that is used for the tagline of book three, which is, quote, regret is the beginning, horror is the transformation, tragedy is the offspring. And that has everything to do with all with the themes of all of the body more, where regret is what you drown in when you die, and you've left things so unhinged that you don't feel like you're ready to die. So you reject death and jump into regret, and then you live back on earth in regret with no ability to be seen by anybody but those who recognize you. Horror is what happens when evil overtakes the heart. That's the tagline of the first book. Horror is the transformation. So when anybody dies and they go through regret, they come back. And, and once that regret consumes them, they become a horror show. It is the transformation and they will do what they have to do. They will lay, lean into their worst impulses, especially if they lack self-control or they get fulfillment out of that, i.e. see Casey, i.e. see some other people. K saying Casey, saying that's Casey is not a spoiler. He dies in, at the beginning of Body More Zero. So <laughs> that's what Body More Zero is about. And then tragedy being being the offspring is whenever these bad things happen and you trans and you and you let regret lead your life and you turn into a horror show then you end up abusing those around you that turns into the tragedy of the next of kin and that's what describes Casey's entire downfall is he was his father's tragedy he was his mother's tragedy and the way that he ends is the expected outcome for somebody of his life. It similarly happens to Joey when she has a flashback or she lives through a memory in Body More 2 about uh, her 16th birthday and this expectation that she was going to be just like her father. She was going to follow in her father's footsteps because she is the tragic, she is the offspring of tragedy, her parents. And you don't have to be the expectation. You can beat that expectation, but it is harder. But 
that's what the body more series is about in themes and so then as you see the characters working through their stories working through their decisions working through their plot lines you'll see this opportunity of what is a second chance and what a second chance looks like and you have to determine if they're worth the second chance but the book clearly makes a statement that people are worth giving a second chance to if they're willing to try. Unfortunately, between Body More Zero and Body More Three, and then Future in the Numina series, when Ralph and Casey go into the Numina series, you get to see the transformation that Casey went through because he got to have the second chance, because he had the influence of Ralph that allowed him to be somebody better, to see something better than the legacy of his parents. And so the choices that you make and the way that your story unfolds is going to tell a theme that's going to more or less show some parts of what you think because that's how you mold your story unless you're completely unless you're doing a a thought exercise that is completely expressing something like a story theme that you don't really agree with at all which that's what you should pay more attention to as a reader what is the story's theme trying to be but still it's it's not a one for one because it's very hard unless you have the author expressing exactly what it is they were trying to do and what it looks like then you really can't be sure what the theme was and so then projecting negative themes on things when you're not entirely sure what it is can become a dangerous place which leads me into gaze upon the gods which is being called a colonizer romance now that book is on my to read list so we can get to the bottom of what the elements are what it looks like and we can read it together the way that it sounds is that somebody falls Falls in love with obviously somebody who is a colonizer and that's not saying that it is justifying the relationship because of that just because a bad thing happens does not mean that the author is supporting those bad things happening and also when it's a series you have to also give a chance for things to unfold. If you stopped in Body More Zero, or if you stopped in Body More One, you don't see the whole arc of what Joey goes through in redemption and understanding the people around her and understanding her own problems and how she couldn't fix any of her problems if she didn't acknowledge that they were there. But she is so full of problems in book one and two, and it's really in book three that you start to see her actually take them on because she can actually take them on, because she can actually see them, because she's dealt with the other things that have stopped her from being able to recognize the life that she's been living on this page for to gaze upon wicked gods which also makes me think because it knows that they're wicked so it knows that it's going to be making bad decisions that just sounds like it's in the title i did want to reference this cindy review at the top that says i respectfully disagree with reviews that say this book is a colonizer romance it doesn't feel like a romance at all it felt more like a character who had to decide between upholding moral versus survival and protecting her family i think the romanticization of a certain colonizer is more so reading from an unreliable narrator who's being manipulated by a white savior but the majority of the story wasn't really about him it's about girly making a bad decisions because she's desperate and that's the path that she chooses in the face of colonization i think people of color authors should be allowed to explore difficult themes in their cultural history without being a drag if they don't do it perfectly in their readers eyes we want writers to take risks whether a reader ends up liking the end result or not we should encourage stories to incite discourse and different interpretations without having the writer's personhood and morals be questioned. And I agree with that, but I want to expand it to say not just people of color authors, all authors should be allowed to explore difficult themes and differences, and then we can discuss those things. That's why when I look at Tampa, I might go like, why was this published? That has more to do with the stories I've seen rejected in order for a poorly written story, in my opinion, to have been published like Tampa you know, through trad pub when it's so hard to get trad pub and you're like, this is what gets it. <laughs> it's, it's more like, I don't want to say outrage. It's not outrage. It's just like this, this is really what you're doing instead of all those other books that are better written. This, this is what you're doing really. Okay. Okay. But even whenever it's published, we can still talk about the contents. And that's what I don't like is that whenever you're talking about a book or criticizing an idea of a book or discussing the direction of a book, like, yeah, you want to know how earnest an author is and maybe what they're doing if they're if they're sharing something toxic. But it's still a better place to be than not, to have those ideas out there, to have those discussions generally. And I don't know where you go from there, but we want to have that open door. I might not like I might not like what everybody does. And that's why I express my opinions in these in these videos where I talk about what I think I didn't like. And that's why I express my opinions in these videos where I talk about the books, what I liked, what I didn't like. 
uh, where I think they went wrong, how I don't like them. And I will criticize the people in the writing industry that I just don't agree with the way that they're doing things. Am I restricting any of them? No, but there is a strong difference between criticizing something or sharing your opinion and then trying to force somebody out. Which brings me to the next thing that I want to mention, which is this tweet. There was a publisher that got in trouble like a, a week or two ago, a small press publisher, Hellbound Books, because a couple of years ago, they published a book that was called I Am Joe's Unwanted Penis, and it was by James H. Long Longmare, it looks like, based on the, sorry, the, the image is so small. And they were being flagged. So apparently or they were being flogged on Twitter and chased around for being transphobic or or all of the kinds of words. They, they got racist, fat phobic. And not only were people dogpiling on them for a book that they published apparently years ago in a series that is called I Am Joe's Blank. And so it's just a bunch of whatever those are. I don't know much more about it. But it was stuff like this ginger nut of horror. We're really disappointed that when this broke... That when this broke, I had 987 mutuals with this transphobic, racist, fatphobic AI using publisher Hellbound Books. Now, the AI is definitely a reason to uh, <laughs> back away. But that's a decision that I'm going to make and not pressure other people into doing it. And this kind of also goes into the problem with the writing industry that I mentioned or the writing community that I mentioned in last Saturday's video with this dogpiling, where it's not just you saying, hey, I don't like this. It's a person saying, hey... I'm going to dogpile on this. I'm going to say, I cannot believe that you were associated with this thing. Now, it's one thing if you go, look, I'm not going to associate with this. I'm not going to associate with you. It's whatever. Do your own thing. I'm not going to associate with anybody that uses generative AI. I'm not going to agree with them. I can still look at their opinions objectively and say, you know, you can do whatever. I'm just not going to support you. And I'm going to disagree with you on this. But I'm not going to pressure other people to drop others because of my personal boundaries. I'm just going to choose the ties that I have. And so whether it's stuff like I am Joe's unwanted penis or Tampa or Heather or colonizer romances, read authors need to be able to write whatever they write. And then you can discuss the contents of those books. Like I'm going to do later in the summer with Cuckoo by Gretchen Felker Martin. We're going to go through that because, you know, I read Manhunt. So we're going to freaking see what she, we're going to see what happened with Cuckoo. And you can write it and, I, and publish it and I can talk about it. But that's just the thing, is not starting a campaign to cancel people. Just go and talk about the book, talk about the ideas, talk about the themes, see what they are. This is one of the things I'd also love to have more authors being willing to talk about the ideas, especially when they write something that is transgressive. But obviously, when you're critical of somebody's book, they're going to be less likely to want to talk to you because they also don't want to say anything that makes it look worse, that makes it sound worse. They don't want to be dogpiled on. They don't want to be set up. And so obviously, it is all a very sketchy area. But hearing people talk about their books and the themes and the ideas behind the books are so interesting to me. And we need to be allowed to explore ideas and relationships and follies and the way that people get away with things without becoming accusatory towards one another. We can talk about the books and I try really, really hard, as hard as I can, to stick with what is this book trying to say? What is the theme or what are the ideas that I'm walking away with? Sometimes it feels like the line of book discussion and criticism, it's only extremes. It's either, well, you're saying that it can't be published, it can't be done by being critical of it, or you're told that you can't be critical of it, period, or else it's really bad for you professionally, it's really bad. You're basically yucking in somebody else's yum. It's It makes it difficult to actually discuss books and the depths of books and the, the experiences that books can have when they're not just rushed out crap fodder like some people do. Additionally, something that I thought about while recording this is also how questionable sometimes book interpretation can be because some people will look into the way that you are disseminating information or discerning information and then turn accusations against you for not saying the correct thing about what was read because you maybe had a different read on it, which again turns, turns book discussion and what should be exploration of ideas or experiences or interpretations and a chance to let us grow into an aggressive battleground. Or there are the cases where somebody will see the kind of books that you like, and then they will use that as a bludgeoning tool against you to go and find whatever is in those books that may be able to turn into an insult or an accusation against you. Maybe it's one scene. Maybe it's the theme. Maybe it's the style of the book. Who knows? But sometimes it's used to just call you a bad person for reading the wrong books. And it's really, it's kind of disturbing that it has to be taken to such a level 
that there's so much pressure, not just in how you write, but in also how you read, and then peer pressure to make sure that you read it the correct way or you keep your mouth shut, or else you're going to get dogpiled on next with accusations. And it is impossible to talk about books and ideas when somebody is just always waiting around the corner to take what you say in the worst way possible so that they can label you with something. It's rough. And you can dislike anything that you want and you can be as critical as you want of those things. I've got my own things that I am usually much more um, critical of or things that I just don't enjoy. And I'm not going to get on anybody for liking those things, but I'm just particularly not going to enjoy them. But we all have these different things that are going to touch us differently, whether it's the Joe's unwanted penis or it's some kind of over-sexualization or it's some kind of religious trauma, or in my cases, I hate infidelity, sexual humor, over-sexualization where it's unnecessary and humiliation or hurt as humor like tom and jerry or roadrunner i just i cannot stand people getting hurt and unfortunately in a lot of rom-coms the big go-to is also humiliation humor and i just don't like seeing people get hurt i don't think it's funny i don't think it's a joke but a lot of people do just because a main character has some of these bad traits or does these bad things does not mean that the book is necessarily teaching that it's okay it all depends on the accumulative uh clues and hints throughout the book or throughout the series that'll show whether or not something worked just be careful because the idea that if a central character has a bad or toxic trait that it's somehow teaching people that something's okay is egotistical limiting and not super bright and again that's not that's also not doing all book anarchy i can make moral judgments but i'm not going to mistreat you because we're different we might not be friends we might have different tastes but I'm not going to bully you off the internet. That's that's where it comes down to. And you know, this thing of like calling this book Call Eyes or Romance to go after the author in order to scare the author into not doing this anymore. Or books that go, oh, you're a racist, so you're not allowed to do that because we're going to chase you down and just call you a racist until you fix it because now we're now we're making claims about you to try to control you. It happens a lot. It is such a sketchy subject because you want to read into stories and you want to know what the themes are and then the themes follow what authors do believe or authors do think or the way or or something that an author is trying to show. But just let the story stand for itself and let the author's words outside of the story stand for themselves and make your decisions based on how you feel about either. You're racing the experiences of people by saying things like only bad guys should smoke. You're cool with insulting or belittling people in your fiction in an attempt to make them behave how you think that they should while erasing the experiences of others. You're judgmental in the worst ways, determining if someone doesn't act how you think that they should all the time in every way, then they should always be relegated to a villain. It's like attaching all of the worst traits onto one person so that you know that they're the villain because now they're villain coded. Labels are often used to bully people into behaving in expected ways. And that's where crossing a line with an author kind of gets sketchy. Because using labels are designed to create a negative emotional response so that you doubt yourself and conform back into the standard that they want to place you in so you only write the correct thing. Essentially, people are spending their entire lives being bullied to not be given a label. However, having a discussion about a book, asking the whys, talking about personal preferences does not necessarily mean labeling. There's a major difference difference between making an accusation and discussing likes or dislikes or just saying you're not going to associate with that thing. Go ahead. Say you're not going to associate with that publisher because you don't agree with the things that they publish. Go ahead and say you're not going to associate with that author or with that group because you don't agree with the things that they stand for in the same way that you wouldn't associate with that church or that club or that political movement if they don't do the things that you stand for. It's okay to say that you have a problem with something that somebody is doing. And that's where it gets sketchy. Because some people will take it as you making a stance of any kind is somehow picking at someone else. I recently saw a video with somebody who is a founder or a big member of the 20 to 50k group who was saying that if you find out that an author has ghost written a book or books or have used AI, don't tell anybody. It's not your job to tell anybody. It's not your job to be the community police. It's our industry. It reflects on all of us. If I see an author who is cheating readers, I'm allowed to say something and the authors can completely ignore me. The readers can completely ignore me, but I don't owe it to the author to keep my mouth shut so that they can make more money. I can disassociate. 
I can I cannot associate. I can say that I see shady business. And that's the same way of saying I don't like the way that this character is written. Or in the case of like with the extreme horror community with the guys trading nudes or somebody acting inappropriately. You could say this is what they're doing and I'm not going to be a part of it. And that's a step away. That is a far step away from, and if any of you guys have anything to do with that person, then I'm blocking you too. Just make your decisions. And if you do, and if you do that, if you want to block everybody related to a certain something, then then do it. It looks insincere and like posturing and bullying to me when it's turned into this big thing of peer pressure out in the open that conform or die. And that becomes the motto of any sort of community of conform or die. I don't know. There's a there's a lot going on in here because it's a very nuanced conversation. I get that. The nuance is what is what makes it difficult. Because like where is the line? And just know that no matter what you do, you're going to have people that you don't fit in with, and that's fine. You're going to have people that just don't like you, and that's fine. And that's what's going to go on. And you're going to have morals that don't match with somebody else's morals, and that's fine. And you can state them. It's kind of crazy to me how often you can say, these are my beliefs and this is how I act. And so these are the kinds of people that I'm going to surround myself with based on how they're treated and I'm treated by them. If you share how your morals or your beliefs are different with someone who is who approaches things differently, I don't see anything wrong with that. What I do see something wrong with is you sharing your morals and then somebody else is coming at you with how they need to school you and how wrong yours are and how wrong you are and how you are evil and gaslighting and manipulating you and insulting you to try to get you to conform. And I've had that happen more than a couple of times with just sharing, this is how I live my life. I don't try to put it on anybody else. This is just how I live. And then you're called a bad person for deviating from the expectation. Where is the line between, you know, saying your beliefs, trying to force people? Where is the where is the line in book discussion and observing themes and ideas in books and then projecting them onto the author or observing them in the author? I don't know. It's a very it's a very gray area. It's a very nuanced area because you're also dealing with art, so you're going to end up with story analyses that are different from what the author wants and Generally, I would love more stuff of authors talking about their books. And maybe they're not as deep as you think they are, because that can also get you in trouble. See, get that too, is when you get the author talking about their book, then it can pull the, the blinds, the shades back, and it leaves readers disappointed that some of the things that they read into are not actually part of the story, which the takeaway from any work of art is always a, a collaboration between the author and the, the viewer. But uh, I'm sorry this video is all over the place. I kind of just... I want to encourage people to explore whatever they've got to explore. There's, I don't know if anybody else is feeling it because I've been so disassociated with the writing community as a whole for a couple of years now. But there has previously been a lot of fear in the writing community or amongst artists in or in with this necessity to conform, with this necessity to perform in a certain way or write a certain way, um, to not use certain words or to use certain ideas and... I mean, I had, I think it was my grandmother that commented on Joey smoking and being surprised that Joey and Jag smoke because no main characters smoke in like the last 20 or 30 years because it's been bad guy coded. But then I'm like, you know how many protagonists do pot or hard drugs and then suddenly we're not allowed to have nicotine? <laughs> it's just, it's funny. It's funny the things that people draw lines on. Anyway, bottom line, like what you like, hate what you hate, feel free to discuss what you want to discuss and be part of the conversation. That's the fun thing about these exchanges is just to discuss and not, and, and maybe we get somewhere deeper and maybe I just get insulted. That's, <laughs> that's always the risk. But with that said, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. Have a great weekend. Thank you for uh, dealing with whatever this is. And, uh, don't die. Was that Wayland Cross in the trunk? Do you know, or is that something that's still being figured out? The person in the trunk was not Wayland Cross. Is he in trouble? We don't know who did it, but as the owner of the car, the longer he's missing, the worse it looks for him. Cross isn't a killer. For the last couple of years, the average number of murders in Baltimore has been over 300, and it's been going up. Mind you, that's only whatever the badges count as official murder, and believe me, there are people that don't count when they die. Wayland? If you're down here, tell me. 
I'm not talking to the badges. I just... I've been looking for you. They found a body in your trunk. Way. Why? Did you do that? To the left, plain black letters read along the wall. You walked in the corridor. Once that ends, you chose the dark is on the right. My vision goes blurry, flickers black and black and black for longer intervals until I can't see anything at all. I'm not screaming anymore, but my voice echoes back to me. Where the hell am I? You're dead, Josephine. Even smart people do stupid shit sometimes, right? <laughs>